governorship disputes. Supreme Court delivers judgments, validates the electoral victories of all eight governors, and governance cut cost by 60%, not travels alone. Peter Obita was President Bola Tinubu. I am Bola Oba and this is Plus Politics. Amid watertight security, the Supreme Court has delivered Mekoma judgments in eight separate governorship election legal battles. The states where the governors knew their fates are Kano, Plato, Bauchi, Cross River, and Nasarawa, among others. Notable among the political parties are the All Progressives Congress, APC, People's Democratic Party, PDP, New Nigeria People's Party, NMPP, Labour Party, LP, and Social Democratic Party, SDP. The governors reinstated are Babajide Sonwo Olu, Lagos State, Alex Oti, Abia State, Francis Nwifuro, Ebony State, and Basi Otu of Crossover States had their elections validated. Authors are Caleb Mutfwang, Plateau State, Bala Mohamed, Bauchi State, Dada Lawal, Zamfara State, and Abba Yusuf, Kano State. Joining us is a senior advocate of Nigeria and human rights and public interest lawyer, Jibrin Okutepa, and public affairs analyst, Barrister Justice Webbo. Gentlemen, welcome to Plus Politics. Hello, gentlemen. I can yeah, see. Good evening. Good evening, Barista. Okay, uh, Barista I, Justice. I, I, I yes. How would you interpret the uh, judgments of the Supreme Court uh, for the eight governors whose uh, ele electoral victories were validated today? How would you? What's, what would be your summary interpretation to start with? <laughs> Well, the truth of the matter is that I see it as um, as a judgment in good direction because if you look at the ratio, the ratio in the judgment so far, I think is in tandem with the norm of the election and the yearnings and aspirations of the people. That's the most important thing. And again, I would also say that I think the Supreme Court has um, somehow uh, begin to or uh, want to. Rekindle is uh, struck uh, by, to, by the people. Because earlier before now, Nigerians have always seen the, 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 the judiciary as a problem of the country. But in fact, it, 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 it created a lot of issues, a lot of um, tension. And other. But I thank God that the Supreme Court, in his wisdom, uh, has uh, done the needful, and uh, I believe that Nigerians will be happy uh, with the judgment so far. Because at the time, it was more like uh, a electoral victory and not left in the hands of the judiciary, which is not supposed to be so. Uh, but I think so far, I am comfortable with the judgment of the Supreme Court. Uh, a very <laughs> cynical friend of mine today said, Bola, this is a validation of thogocracy. And I, I asked him what he meant by thogocracy. He said, Bola, what could the Supreme Court have done regarding Kano and perhaps Plato, knowing what, could, knowing what a contrary judgment could elicit in those two, in those two uh, states? Uh, and so, was it a case of uh, jurisprudential timidity, given the fact that, especially in the, in the case of Kano State, uh, the Court of First Instance, the Tribunal, uh, the Court of Appeal, have uh, given judgments with good reasonings to the effect that the incumbent ought to, 
ought to, uh, you know, be defenestrated, and yet the Supreme Court just found some, uh, some, um, almost like reviewing the evidence that had been that had been spoken to at the at the two previous courts, like reviewing the evidence at the Supreme Court to find a way of justif justifying the validation of the election of the Kano state governor. Uh, what's your take on that? Uh, on that uh, maybe cynical reasoning, but it's worth looking into. No, for me, it's not a matter of jurisprudence. You see, I keep on telling people that um, as lawyers and as uh, um, ministers in the temple of justice, there are certain things we look at. And again, let us also understand the fact, especially the Appeals Court, which is the Supreme Court. Any judgment the Supreme Court gives becomes based on public safety, public security and public stability. At times, there might be a departure from the law, you know, simplicity as it's supposed to be. So I'm, still, I'm looking at it as that direction. Because if you remember before now, there was so much tension, especially in Canon State. In fact, people, we are, we are so tense that everybody believes that anything can happen. But I thank God that the truth has come to remedy that. So for me, it's not a matter of jurisprudence. It's a matter of talking about the law. It's a matter of, you know, doing the right thing. It's a matter of doing the needful. It's a matter of, you know, doing what the law should do and what it should be. And again, the yearnings and the aspiration of the people. If you follow we have the history that we have been playing party politics for so long. This issue of winner takes all. And that is what we are, we are having and that is the problem we are getting. In fact, I am not interested in the Kano governorship election. And I thank God the Supreme Court has given that value the way it should be. If not, maybe by now, we still have been experiencing a different thing. So it's not a matter of jurisprudence. Because if you talk about jurisprudence, the lower court, the tribunal, getting to the Court of Appeal, there are nothing jurisprudential about it. So when the Supreme Court gives a judgment, you take them to read the judgment, look at it, let's show the lender, and also the obitur victim. That is the two things. Any, any, any good lawyer will look in every judgment, you know, before you draw your conclusion. So for me, it is okay. Uh, but beyond the, uh, beyond the judgments of the Supreme Court on these uh, governorship cases, uh, there is a major dysfunctionality in our electoral system that is yearning for attention and reform. Because if the electoral process were to be tidy enough, we will not be in a position where it's now taking the Supreme Court to be the final place of settlement of electoral uh, contestations between our politicians. And we know, and you know, people listening or watching uh, should know that litigation in in cases of disputations is also part of our electoral process uh, i am not one of those journalists or broadcasters who tend to want to give the impression that uh when politics is better to litigate than to cause anarchy and chaos in society so uh, uh, and you know one cannot but we would rather like to see our electoral contestations end on the day the ballot were cast and the politicians shake themselves and governance commences. Well, how would you respond to that? I, I, I will have to agree with you in total on this issue. You see, the problem we are having is this. Let us be realistic to ourselves. And uh, the fact is this. Um, the electoral system is not tidied up, as far as I'm concerned. And again, um, the, 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 the Independent Electoral, electoral Commission, INEC, yes, we say they are independent, but actually, in the actual part, are they actually independent? Because the truth is this, if the people trust the system, and if the system is apolitical, 
If the system is free and fair, many people will not want to go to election to Aruna or go to court. Because when you are in, 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 in a system that is free and fair, that is man with, 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 with integrity, you don't need to go to court for anything. But the problem we have here is because these people do not even trust the system. These people do not even trust the politicians. And the island, as I speak to you, is not even independent. So that is the problem we have. It's not like what we are saying. As far as I'm concerned, I keep on recommending that if you want to get it right, there are so many things we need to do. Our electoral laws, there are still so many lacunas in our electoral laws. Secondly, if you remember, we talked about the uh, Justice Wales uh, Electoral Reform Committee. If that can be put in place, all these things can be checkmated. But unfortunately, I think the key problem we have here is the politicians. That is our problem. And unfortunately, like I keep on saying, the issue of winner takes all. He who pays the paper defends the truth. For me, I have always been a crusader of the fact that the president should not appoint the INEC chairman. Personally, yes. Because if that is certainly, we we'll begin to begin to see little little changes. I know we may not go see it a day. But if you look at it from nineteen ninety nine till date, I don't think we are domestically progressing. We are not progressing. Or rather, what we are facing is what I call the law of diminution of returns. And it's so unfortunate. And that is why the court has to step in here. Ordinarily, in the state or in the country. It's so unfortunate. Uh, you know, it's quite ironic that uh, the immediate past president and indeed the incumbent president when they were in opposition, as opposition leaders, uh, were vociferously in support of the, uh, were vociferously in support of uh, the recommendations of the Waste Committee uh, being being transmuted into uh, reforms in our electoral uh, electoral law, and yet President Muhammad Buhari had eight years, and barely and barely did you know, pretty little to, to bring about the enactment of so many of the reforms that he, he, he literally went on the street with the incumbent president to assert that they be put, you know, they be made laws. So what, what, why is our politicians this seemingly hypocritical, opportunistic? They speak with one voice when they are in opposition, when they are where they ought to effect the changes that they had earlier agitated for, they suddenly become uh, they suddenly become uh, either pretensive or practically uh, you know deceitful. Uh, or am I being a bit too emotional? <laughs> you, you, you are not, my brother, but that is the truth. You see, I keep on telling Nigerians that the major problem we have is what I call lack of sincerity of purpose. And that has been our problem, lack of sincerity of purpose. Because if you look at it, like you said, Mwari has been there for eight years. Now, uh, for the children have entered. My brother, does it take anything for them to do the need for? But the problem here is this. Most of them know that these reforms may work against them. Because when there is sincerity of purpose, it doesn't matter who is there. It doesn't matter who is in the realm of affairs. But if we must break it twice, we must be patriotic enough to always say the truth and to always do the need for. Because whether you like it or not, we are setting a precedent. And what precedent are we setting? A good one or a bad one? And everyone is complaining. Nigeria is this, Nigeria is that. And you see, I have to say this also. That we are having today. We are being for, for change. Yes, our generation is being for change. I said this earlier in one full life. Most of the people, in fact, major problem, like 99 percent of problem we are having today. Our people from the from age of 80 years, in fact, from age of 50 to 80, 90. It was our generation. And I don't know why. And these are the people that have been killed in us from this country. The people that, that end the milk and the honey of this country. They could do they don't want us to 
you enjoy what they enjoy. Is that not wickedness? What does it take? Mr. Justice, uh, let's come back to uh, the, the primary issue we're we looking at this evening. Uh, and that is, for me, do you think that uh, these cases, especially these electoral litigations, governorship, and uh, the presidential uh, litigations as far as the Supreme Court, do you think in a way they may be bringing the Supreme Court into a bit of uh, a bit of optical optical dispute of a sort? And when I say optical dispute, I mean in, in PR terms. You know, people, when cases of this nature now get to the Supreme Court, uh, sometimes, I don't know, maybe it's me, you just wonder, it's not, it's not going to be about the law. It's just going to be about some, some uh, you know, I, I want to be very careful and circumspect the kind of words I use on, <laughs> on TV. But is a, is a, is a, I would want to respond to that. Is it, me, is it only me that feels uncomfortable sometimes for even the justices, the landlords of the Supreme Court, that you know they they, they sometimes sometimes brought into into a meddlesome negative milieu with all uh, these seeming cases. My opinion. Well, you know, like I said before, uh, most times the Supreme Court is the apex court, and of course, you know that. Any, any decision of the Supreme Court, you cannot appeal against it. You can only appeal to God. But remember that any decision of the Supreme Court becomes law. There are no two ways about it. And that is why the Supreme Court, at any point in time, not only in Nigeria, all over the world, must be very, very careful in giving judgment in any decision they are taking. You see, you combine law, you look at facts, and you look at the issues on ground, and you match it with public stability and public safety. And, you know, so you now look at it very well and bring it up together and also look at the feelings and the feelings of the people. Like what I said, um, I think the Supreme Court, for me, I am happy with the decision so far. Like, I think I'll say, and I'll say it again and again and again. But as far as I'm concerned, the Supreme Court tries to remedy um, its integrity here now. Because already, like I said before, Nigerians have seen the judiciary, especially the Supreme Court, as one of the, if I'm not even one, the major problem that the country is having this year. But I think that the Supreme Court has, in its wisdom, done justice to this matter. But I think we should look beyond that. Why I say this is this. Oh, so, uh, justice. To to Ju justice. Vice that... Justice. Before we look beyond that, uh, don't you think there's a dint of hypocrisy? Sometimes when people like you, who, when the Supreme Court gave, uh, gave its judgment on uh, the presidential uh, elections, uh, many like you lambasted the, the justices of the Supreme Court, ridiculed the court, I, I'm just trying to reason, you know, we, we, we have to look at these things from all angles. You know, many, many lambasted the Supreme Court, uh, ridiculed the justices, but now, today, because no apocalypse was toppled, and all the eight governors had their, uh, you know, electoral victories validated by the Supreme Court, oh, you seem to be happy. I, I'm sitting here, I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the, 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 <laughs> oh, the truth is this. If you have followed me, I've followed my interviews and my opinion. I never, for one day, demand, demand the integrity of this record in the presidential election. I keep on telling people that the law court is more like a computer. It's garbage in, garbage out. Is what you put in there, the fact you put in there that will determine whether you win your case or not. You do not expect that if you do not have credible facts and also to prove your facts that the court will give you judgment. The court is not a financial man. I am one of the people that believe that the Supreme Court in the judgment of the 
presidential election is injustice to that matter. Because there were so many issues there were supposed to be put election matters that we are brought to the to, to the Supreme Court. Which I fought at the initial, even before the matter went to court. Uh, uh, well, so, Mr. Justice, Mr. Justice, Mr. Justice. Yes. If this was what you expressed then, did some people did some people cast aspersion on your opinion and some called did some people call you names because I, I want to believe I, I didn't quite do any scientific polling or but I want to believe that people in your position who were who were courageous enough and who had the courage of character to state that they believed that the Supreme Court did the right thing. Many of you, especially lawyers, were lambasted, were lampooned, were called names. Uh, 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 what was the kind of response from you, you got when you expressed this kind of opinion then? Yes, yeah, the truth is that uh, most of my colleagues actually uh, took uh, issues and quarreled with me, but they would not understand. You see, I was not sentimental. It's not a matter of sentiment. As far as I'm concerned, it's a matter of issues, it's a matter of facts, it's a matter of credibility, it's a matter of putting the facts on the ground. I, of course, you know me before now, I am not interested in what people say or what people feel about me. I'm only interested in doing the right thing and saying the right thing. That if you have a good case and you don't know how to present your case and you lose your matter in the court, then so be it. The court is not a for a to give you what you will not ask for. And the court cannot go and jump the gun or place in the gallery to begin to guide you and whatever. So it was more of more of the sentiments and all the rest. And I made it clear to some of our colleagues. So it doesn't matter what they say about me or what they think about me. But what matters uh, uh, I learned is this, is about the law. It's about the facts. And that's what I keep on telling them, whether they believe it or not. So at next time, when you're going to court, you prepare. Because I keep on telling people that it is more like Whatever you are going to come to do is what you have prepared and what you have told yourself is truth. It's not a matter of sentiment. You don't win cases on the pages of newspaper, on social media, or whatever. You must prepare for it and do the needful. We cannot but also... Uh, there are still a couple of uh, states... Uh, to have their governorship cases determined, I think in the minority now, uh, but thus far beyond today and the previous, uh, the previous rulings on uh, on this kind of disputations, your general review beyond today, at least you were you were somewhat, from your opinion, uh, generally satisfied with the kind of rulings given today. Uh, but uh, the previous governorship uh, contestations at the level of the Supreme Court, uh, your take, okay? Uh, I guess we're having some technical glitches. Indeed, uh, the segment was supposed to have been uh, to have been a two-guest segment. We had the consent of uh, senior advocate of Nigeria, uh, Jibrin Okutepa to have uh, partaken in that segment, but unfortunately due to, uh, uh, okay, uh, Vice Justice. Yes, are you with me? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. We had a glitch, you know, uh, uh, and uh, it's yeah. like the, the Grammys are, uh, you know, are out today. But your, your concluding opinion on on uh, the issue of these uh, governorship litigations and the and the rulings of the Supreme Court thus far, not only on today's case, but the previous uh, the previous ones that they have determined. Well, as far as I'm concerned, um, judiciary has done its, its job, the Supreme Court. But I, like I said, I will to go beyond that. I also want to use the opportunity to uh, state that um, uh, politicians should begin to do the needful. That it is this popmanship period in elections. It is not a do or die affair. Because when you begin to leave this thing in the hands of the judiciary, definitely people will, will get disturbed. People will not be happy. 
a good thing because you are a governor, your government in power, the judiciary is going to talk on your behalf or going to be government on your behalf and all that. So for me, um, so far, so good. We will not get it right uh, in total or entirely, but I still believe that we can still get it right. Nigeria is improving. And I'm so happy with the, the, the recent uh, Supreme Court judgment. At least I believe that it has also given hope to a lot of people who felt they have lost hope in the judiciary. Thank you, you very much. I, like, I keep on telling you. Thank you very much, Barrister Justice Iwebu. Uh, quite a good place to leave it. Uh, we'll wrap up this first segment now and uh, we'll go on a short break. And when we're back, the sophomore segment of the show will unfold. Thank you. Thank you very much.